Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to the Hearthstone Weekly Show. Now, for this week, we're going to be covering the last two weeks of Naxxramas spoilers. We got the Warlock card, and also the Priest card. And as usual for these spoiler shows, I br have brought a guest on with me, which is my teammate Dapratchik. Introduce yourself, Dapper. Hi guys, I'm, um, I've been playing Hearthstone since the uh, last round of closed base invites. Um, mostly at the moment I've been playing a lot of um, Rogue and Handlock and uh, topping out at rank 19 last season. Um, so. Yeah. Legend rank, keep in mind. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, I got the. Uh, Actual the card rank back. 19. That, that's my, that's my Actual highest. Actual rank achievement. 19. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you narrowly missed the uh, the BlizzCon qualifier thing, but maybe this season. Maybe this season. Maybe. Um, but yeah, Dapper's basically the resident Miracle Rogue player on the team, uh, for lack of a better phrase. And he also plays a lot of Handlock. Um, much more of a deck pilot than a builder, as opposed to some of, uh, some of the other ones like me and Crispy, which are very, very focused on building as opposed to piloting. So we still have a good mix in the team. But um, anyway, moving on to the actual show, Starting with Void Caller. Now, Void Caller is a 4 mana 3 4. The first 3 4 that they've had in a long time since Cabal Shadow Priest got buffed. I think that used to be a 3 4. And besides that, I think that's the only 3 4 they've ever had. So, 4 mana 3 4. Uh, with Death Rattle, it is a demon. Put a demon from your hand onto the battlefield. Now, this card has had two responses. Uh, one is that it's terrible, and two is that it's amazing. I have never seen anyone in the middle ground. I don't know what I don't know what about this kind of uh, effect makes everyone so polar opposite when it comes to actually thinking about this card. I mean, I I personally really really like it. It was good and it's good when we tried it. So the first thing you got to bear in mind about this card is that you can do some amazing things with it. You can. You know, play it on turn four, and then on turn five, you can run into something, play a Doom Guard, and charge it without discarding anything. You can play the three fifteen Jiraxis. Um, Illidan, it's another one. Yeah, you tried Illidan, um, and it also, you know, it gives a bit of a boost to those demons that look really good, um, like Dread Infernal. Interesting card. It's a six six for six with a whirlwind attached, which is great. Um, it's a bit slow, but, but, but if you cheat but it's, it in... it's never really fit into any deck before. Um, and maybe Void Caller can make that possible. Um, mm. But that said, we're going to have to spend a lot of time kind of pouring cold water on all of the... You know, because it's a combo card, so it can do a lot of good things. But equally, it has problems. And the real reason that um, cards like Dread Infernal haven't been used isn't because they aren't good cards in a vacuum. But because Warlock isn't really suited to um, the kind of deck like a Druid, where you play everything on curve and drop yeah. a bunch of solid minions, and it's just not a mid rangey, not a mid rangey style. Because the point of Warlock is that your cards are bad and your hero power is really good, so you need to get the most leverage out of your hero power that you can, um, and that's not really the ideal strategy that. Um, this kind of deck is focused towards. Like Pit Lord and Dread um, Infernal are always the ones that suffered the most, I think, from that. Yeah. Because Pit Lord. Adds Pit Lord is a really good them. card. Yeah, it just. I mean, even the drawback wouldn't be too bad unless you were killing yourself with Life Tap. Um, I think I would, play, so, I, would play, yeah. I would play Pit Lord and Druid. Yeah. Like I over think, Yeti. I think you would, yeah. It's. it Like the drawback is only notable because you actually have to Life Tap for, for damage. And then it just adds up, especially whenever we did try it. I remember when I was trying to put Void Caller into a deck, and we had, I think it was like Flame of Pit Lord, and when it worked, it was fine, but when it didn't work, you killed yourself. Yeah. Because <laughs> you were and life the, tapping as well. The other big problem with Pit Lord, and um, this is a problem with Void Caller as well, is that um, Void Caller, you lose a lot of tempo when you put it down because it's a 3 4. It doesn't immediately. Um, exert a lot of pressure onto the board. Obviously your opponent is staring at it and wondering if they're about to have a Jiraxis dropped on them. But it doesn't have any immediate pressure. It's a bit like um, Cairn in that way. And like Cairn, it's very vulnerable to sap. Um, 
And scientists in general, actually. And um, so, scientists in general, sure, but um, particularly, like, so your void caller gets sapped, and then you have to play it again the next turn, and you still don't get very much value out of it until the turn after. Um, and in general, the problem with playing a card like Void Caller is, um, especially if you're playing a kind of slower, mid rangey deck um, with all these big demons, you can easily um, just get overwhelmed in the early game if you don't have too much board control because your hero power doesn't affect the board. So if you have to hero power on turn two, maybe turn three, then um, you know if your first player is to drop Void Caller, uh, you could easily get overwhelmed. Um, Something. Something we did actually notice when we were trying with this uh, this card, which, um, as I said last week, we did uh, quite a bit of cockatrice testing with um, a lot of the newer cards. I haven't really touched the priest card yet because it came out yesterday. Um, so, uh, as far as the priest card, not so sure, but the rest of the stuff with Void Caller, we did notice that in the first deck, you know, the obvious one. With like demons and things like that, yeah. it it didn't really work. <laughs> in, well, the, of, in the obvious the problem deck. is that a lot of the demon support cards are really bad. Like sense demons yeah. is just awful. Um, Unless you're playing very few demons. Like uh, the, the the problem with sense demons is it's useless if you don't have more than if you, it's useless if you don't have two plus demons in your deck. Um, but also, more generally, it's a three mana. Basically, it's an arcane intellect. Um, yeah. It's pay three mana, get an extra card. The problem is, tutoring Warlock doesn't right. really have that problem because you have the hero power, which is yeah, pay two mana, power. get an extra card. That's um, true. And um, so, I mean, yes, sense demons is useful for being able to search out that your access or whatever. Um, but I, st I, I still think it's a bit questionable. Um, yeah. I do think Warlock does. Because you can, um, I think the way to play Warlock as a mid-range deck is to um, focus on the fact that one of the benefits of Warlock is that you do have the best one drops in the game. So um, you know, instead of having a curve that's like you know two, three, four, you can play a one drop in turn one, and on two, you, turn two you life tap, and on turn three you life tap, play another one drop, and on turn four you play the void corner. Then you um, have board control along with your Then you, loss. you know, prevents you from falling too far behind, um, especially since you've got those soul fires. The death rattle core. I think what we and, what we yeah. ended up uh, settling on, um, we didn't refine it that much, but what we ended up uh, figuring out was the obvious deck with all the demons didn't really work, but what did kind of work was the um, sort of integrating the demon like mid-range section which was void callers and doom guards and like Draxus, maybe an illidan and like a dread infernal or something with maybe one since demons just to make sure you don't run out of targets for your void caller and the rest was a death rattle core because void caller sort of ties both together like it's not a tempo loss if your undertaker gets benefits off it yeah exactly and um, undertaker as i'm sure uh, i think you discussed um is, before undertaker is amazing <laughs> yeah it's, it's nuts like it, it's um, then you can do some crazy things, like if you're already playing um, the Death Rattle Core, you can put in your um, egg with you know, Void your Terror. Egg, and then you can play the Void Terror on your egg. Oh, and, void Terror uh, on Void Caller, just side note, Void Terror on Void Caller is unfair. <laughs> there was that one turn in one of our test games where you played Void Terror on Void Caller and, and an egg, a Doom got guard. the 7 9. Um, Void Terror, Doctor Doom Guard, and had the Nerubian as well. Uh, six, six, nine. But yeah, it uh, was like on turn sorry, five, yeah. I had a six. six, nine, a four, four, and a five, seven. It was out of nowhere, and it was yeah for it's three awesome. mana on turn five. By the way, like I, I still had other things I could be doing on this turn, like hero powering. <laughs> so I feel like um, that kind of druid deck would do very well against the deck which doesn't deal very well with that sort of board, like um, druid. Yeah, Druid's uh, gonna have a miserable time dealing with uh, demon death rattle yeah. decks because if they silence the void caller, they just get a void terror dropped on them, and if they and they also have to silence like all the death rattle stuff as well. You just run out of silence. Like the thing about void void caller is the silence doesn't get that much value because it's still a three four. Hmm. Um, yeah. So it's decent at that point. It's not good, but it's yeah. I mean, like compared to a yeti silencing, it basically gave it minus one minus one, which is. Sure. Like, um, it kills the spellbreaker if they use a spellbreaker, and if they use a keeper of the grove, then you just kill it with yeah. coil. 
like yeah. mortal coil, and then you still get value out of your your three four. Like three four is actually a very underestimated stat total. Uh, it's As I'm sure we're going to be talking good. about when we move on to yeah, the priest card. Yeah, we move on to the uh, priest card, but they try to outdo themselves with the three fours back to back. But uh, void caller is definitely. I mean, the other problem with the priest card that we're going to talk about a little bit later is that they release void caller, which is it's like super exciting and it does explosive things, and then they're like. Three four for three with a kind of already seen effect. Have fun, guys. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. It's really boring. <laughs> well, like. you say that, but um, I think you know the best cards from Nakaramas are going to be the the boring ones. Boring ones. Um, yeah, that's we've already seen like the the best card that's been released so far. Definitely, right. it's not the crazy combo. You know, um, Baron Rivendell rebirth your can, but um, probably the weapon. The uh, the warrior weapon, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a true silver champion that has a whirlwind attached. It's not fancy, but it's a very very good card which you can do a lot of interesting things with. It's the kind of thing where I kind of wish they uh, reversed the release order of the warlock card and the priest card, because <laughs> then I feel like if they'd reverse the order and release the priest card after duplicate, then people would be hyping up the priest card more. Uh, but because they released void cooler first, people are like, hey, look, it's a three four with a less exciting effect. So like. This is one of the problems with uh, spoiler season in general, is that you create a lot of false perceptions based on the order you release them in. Sure, and one of the caveats we have in all of this discussion, especially when we're talking about decks that are going to incorporate the um, Undertaker core and um, you know, play a lot of Death Rattle minions, is that we don't know what the rest of the cards in the set are going to be. Um, and there could be yeah. some massive game defining card that um, we haven't seen yet. Um, you know, It could be that um, the Undertaker is a lot better given that we're going to get some better death rounds. It's going to get better. Like, the scary mm -hmm. thing for me is that, I mean, I've been playing Hearthstone for so long now, I've seen all the nerfs that have happened over the past year, and from what I can tell from Nax Ramus, the power level of these cards are about as high as Hearthstone was just before beta, like, oh, just before closed beta was released. And that means that probably, um, once the rest of the set comes out, like, we have cards like Dancing Swords, which are pretty bad once the rest of the set comes out. And yeah. it's playable because of Undertaker. Like, Undertaker is a one-drop, which... I mean, I just to give you an idea of the kind of power level we're, we're talking about here, Undertaker is a one-drop which, if they made a year ago, would have been balanced. But yeah. they made it now. Like, because a year ago it was contending with uh, Stealth 3-2 Flame Imp. Uh, it was contending with the Blood Wait, Imp. What? Yeah, it, it used Flame to have Imp Stealth. Had stealth. Yes. Um, Blood Imp, uh, the Global Blood Imp. Oh, that, the OP Blood Imp. Yeah, the OP Blood Imp. It was contending with uh, things like Summoning Portal Combo. That was 3 mana. Like, the power level of the cards has gone down so much that an Undertaker is a card that a year ago would have been completely balanced and people are like, eh, it's a good one drop. Um, yeah, and the, thing, yeah. The, the, main thing, the main thing to bear in mind about Undertaker is it comes down on turn one, it's a one two, which is very difficult to immediately kill. And then becomes a two three. And then it becomes a two three, and then three, four. already it's got value, but then you still have to, then you now have to prioritize immediately killing a two three, which isn't the easiest thing to do. Um, See, River Croc. in the game, and a lot of decks just can't deal with it. And then, yeah, if you're not Mage or uh, Druid, yeah. you're having issues killing that thing. You know, and you don't draw a wrath every game. That's um, true. Uh, if they do have the, you know, the, the Undertaker Dream Curve, Undertaker, and then Rubian Egg, or like Coin Double Left and then one, some crazy. You're just done, I think. If they um, have, they have two. If they have two Undertakers on turn one into Double Left I, I don't wow, think there's yeah. an opening that beats that. That's like swing for six on turn two. On um. It's it's a kind of it's that kind of thing. Egg is I mean, another it, card. It does have kind of really Argent Spire high. syndrome in the fact that if you top deck it on turn eight, you feel really sad. But um, yeah, but the people play Argent Squire, and I yeah, people, yeah. I think Undertaker is a better Argent Squire. So it's like it still has the terrible top deck syndrome, but most one drops do. Yeah. Uh, keyword being most all, all one like, drops do. Abuse um, of Sergeant's not that bad at the top deck, but like most one drops are really really bad when you top deck them. Uh, so it's kind of expected of a one drop, to be honest. But I mean, it's it's not just that. Like Deathspite, for example, is one of the strongest weapons that they've ever made. 
Like, I think it might actually be the best weapon in the game. Um, like, maybe contending with Doomhammer and Gorehal. Yeah. Doom. Um, it's, it's, it's quite hard to evaluate the different weapons. But, exactly, yeah. but it's one of the best weapons they've ever made. Then you have things like... I mean, the Dancing Swords one, I think, is the interesting one. People would have never even looked at Dancing Swords a year ago. Whereas now people are considering it, and... Well, yeah, I mean, obviously the first me. look at Dancing Swords when you evaluate it on its own, and you say, well, this card is terrible. But... but death Rattle. It buffs Undertaker. That, <laughs> that's, that's the that's reason. That's a major thing. Uh, but there's other ones, like Shade of Nax Ramus. Uh, I still think it's a joke, but people would not even have looked at it a second. Like, it, it's it's the kind of thing which now I don't think the card is good in any way, but people are even considering it. But that's simply because the power level of the cards in Hearthstone has gone down. So if you look at, so um, you think um, Nax is going to return the power level to up? I think yeah, because they've been suffering from negative power creep for ages. Because they don't buff things, they nerf them. So eventually the power level of the game comes down. Like look what happened to Druid. If Druid was nerfed into the ground from being completely broken. And then it became a tier one deck again because everything else was nerfed. <laughs> yeah. Like that—that's a—that's a common cycle. Like in that's the history kind of Hearthstone. Side point, uh, game design thing. Yeah, exactly. But Do you I think, think uh, negative up. power creep or positive power creep is better? Um, I think positive power creep is better because it's not. I mean, each extreme is bad because I've seen what happens in other oh, sure. games. But I think slight positive power creep is better than negative because. If it's positive power creep, it lets you do more crazy stuff, whereas negative power creep allows you to do more boring things. <laughs> like this is this is this is the kind of thing I mean. Like it, um, Miracle Rogue. I think this is the best example. Miracle Rogue has had three iterations. The first Miracle Rogue killed you on turn three consistently. <laughs> with mana addict because that thing that yeah. thing hit really hard um second one used to get like 21 21 stealth van cleefs out and draw a million cards for two mana and, and now they only like, play the leroy three times well playing leroy three times you'd be laughed at if you even considered that in miracle rogue like in september <laughs> sure, sure. it's like wait why are you waiting till turn eight you just kill them on turn four <laughs> Like <laughs> seriously, so that's I think the best example of the uh, the negative power creep is Miracle Rogue, over time, and I think Nax is bringing it back up. And what's probably going to happen is that the Nax cards are going to be much more powerful than the current set cards, and then they're either going to buff up some of the current ones, or they're going to nerf some of the Nax ones, and then a new set is going to come out, which means people will be more excited for each set. So. If they want to do the negative power creep thing, which they have shown, they want to do more nerfing than buffing when it comes to balancing, uh, they're probably going to release each set at a slightly higher power level than the current pool of cards, and then nerf them down over time before they release a new one. Which sure. I'm and okay with. Another point is that it's really hard to know, looking at these cards, like which ones are going to be the problematic ones. Um, yeah. Like Imagine that um, the two cards being uh, shown were Two Man Unleash the Hounds and Mountain Giant. Um, and people will be saying, oh my god, you can play it on turn 4 and um, it took people a long time to realise uh, just how broken Unleash was um, well, to be fair Unleash had only been out for like two weeks <laughs> when the, because Unleash was changed right, yeah, Unleash was changed and then, you know, there was this Rush Hunter deck that was kind of good around for a month or two and then people realised, wow you know, Savannah High Maid is also a good card it's also a good card, it's a good 6 draw um, and when when Tinkmaster got um, I mean, I think just before we move on to the priest card, the I think the best example of what I mean by the parallel of the set is if they put two mana on like, all right, if they put three mana unleash the hounds and the knack spoilers, you might consider it a bit, but you probably wouldn't be thinking of it as like a key card. If they put two mana unleash, you'd be thinking, oh, this is one of the better cards. But well, you wouldn't well, say it's broken my compared point to the rest is of the stuff. It's hard to say whether a card like Unleash is broken. Yeah, it's before, hard. You know, it is definitely hard. Before people have been playing with it for years. People, uh, yeah, people did uh, did think that when they, they buffed Unleash from 4 to 2, that there was something wrong with that. Because most people thought it should be 3. Uh, As a side note, do you think the. Because uh, the, the, we're, we're still waiting for the, the Hunter card is the last one to be spoiled, right? Yeah. Do you think the spoiler is just going to be. Spoiler, there's no new Hunter card, we're just changing Unleash back to 2 mana. I'm gonna, to be honest, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> like, I want to do broken things with that card again. 
Um, but in all seriousness, I think it's either going to be a Death Rattle minion, like, it's either going to be a Death Rattle beast for like 4 or 5 mana or 3 maybe, or it's going to be a trap, probably, or maybe a weapon. Probably a trap or a beast. Um, yeah, I, I hope it's some beast synergy stuff. But any trap would be interesting as well if it's good. Yeah, anyway. Um, moving on to the most underhyped card of the entire set so far, and it's only, it's only even been out for a day. Like, Dark Cultist, 3 mana, 3, 4, Death Rattle, give a friendly minion 3 health. First of all, the flavor on this is terrible. It's a Dark Cultist that gives you life. Right, it should be doing something nefarious. I mean, I know that the flavor is that it kills itself to do it, but it's still weird. <laughs> Still looks but, weird. Um, that aside, um, the card is amazing. But that aside, like that, the problem is I have to look at Dark Cultist. I mean, giving I things mean, it's it, 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 it's time. no in a fire, but it's it's still pretty solid. You know? <laughs> um, the first things first is a three. It's a three mana three four, which um, is amazing. Is a really yeah, it's a solid body. It's it's a three mana yeti, except it has text. It, yeah, um, that's actually a good comparison. It kills Harvest Golem easily with the hero power. Yeah, actually, this is the card that you don't want to... Well, uh, to some extent. I mean, there yeah. is the point that um, this card... If you attack over Harvest Golem with this card, the damage Golem kills it. Well, no, you can heal it and, with hero power. Um, it just eats the Harvest Golem. Like, what else are you yeah. doing on turn um, four? So, there's two ways to look at this card, because um, the main weakness of Priest is that the priest hero power is amazing. It's, it's one of those hero powers that's amazing if you have board control. But then yeah. all of the priest cards are set up to play this slow control deck that never has board control. Um, and just waits for you to play a bunch of minions and then kills them all. Um, so there's two ways to look at this card. One way is to say, well, this is remedying that weakness. Now we can play board control priest and it'll be amazing. Um, yeah. there's another, um, or, or equally, you can say, well, this isn't going to fit into the way that Priest plays, so it's not as good as it looks. And certainly, um, there will be more hype about this card if it was in any other class. Um, That's true. But certainly, I know that um, Colento was um, a month or maybe ago uh, testing out the kind of board control type mid range Priest, where you play minions on curve and actually do things. Um, certainly, that deck is going to get a lot better. Um, a lot better. After uh, Naxxramas, because you can play the Undertaker in it, this card synergizes with that. Um, you got your Loot Horde and your Harvest Golem. One of the problems to bear in mind is that you now have a lot of three drops. Um, because you you know you want to play the Harvest Golem, you also want to play the Blade Master. I think you cut injured, to be honest. Like, simply, the problem with doing... Not because it's not powerful enough, but simply because if you're playing a lot of three drops, having the Circle of Healing is really awkward like oh because the circle gets worse as well uh, with yeah the like because you, if you're organizing and then you're organizing your own board half the time so it's like the circle combos get worse and then blade master without circle is usually worse than cultist because it like um, you don't have if you have it on curve it's worse um because you can i think circle might rough. still be in the deck because you can do some Maybe. disgusting things with like north shark Eric and stuff yeah, you can, but I I don't think it's going to be as combo focused as the current priest, like creature. Um, yeah, we right. haven't really talked about how good the um, death rattle is, other than to say that it's good. Uh, the death rattle I think is actually a lot more powerful than people think it is. Uh, three health is a lot. <laughs> like yeah. it's. It turns fairy dragons. Fairy dragons. Oh, we've got robot dapper. Have we? Micro oh. Am I right? No, you're okay now. That was weird. Okay, well done. Skype does some weird things sometimes. Anyway. Um, it's it's basically a power... It's a really powerful power word shield. And it also means that most likely... It has like the, the Sun Fury Protector uh, syndrome, where people are going to be killing other things than this. And you can actually use that to your advantage. Because right. they're not going to play... That. Like, they would actually consider not playing... If you think about it, they'd actually consider not playing a Yeti into this. Because if you just play like a Northshire cleric and run it into the Yeti and then like smite the Yeti, you're so far ahead, it's just disgusting. Yeah, actually, um, like, one, of, I mean, one of the problems with this card is that it is quite vulnerable to 
um, the Yeti. Um, it's not the shadow word Yeti that a lot of people were expecting. It still puts it in smite range, which is really um, important. Yeah, sure, and you get some value from death rattle, but still. Um, and but um, I mean, the nightmare scenario is you play a Yeti into this, and then they have the Dark Iron Dwarf. Oh. Um, which becomes a four seven. <sighs> um, There's your injured blade master replacement. <laughs> yeah right. Um, that's that's. Ugh. I know, it's, it, it's 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 hard to kind of understate how difficult it is to kill a three four on turn three. Um, People have difficulties killing harvest golem, let alone right. a three four. Like it's difficult to kill a three four and turn four sometimes with some classes. <laughs> Sure. Um, it's miserable. It's it's pretty miserable, and the fact that it has three attack is actually fairly relevant. It kills almost every three draw, profitably, right. almost. And the important the, the important thing is that um, you don't even need to have to stick a two drop in order to get value because it's likely going to survive. So you can then um, you know follow up with a four drop and then suicide into something. I think so, this is this also happens to be the card that it, out of all the cards that have been spoiled in that so far, this exploits Undertaker the most. Oh wow! Because like, you pump up your Undertaker, and then if they can't kill the Undertaker on their turn, and you set you manage to sacrifice a Dark Cultist into whatever they're trying to trade into it, you just win the game. <laughs> like th they can't kill that without a silence anymore. Sure, things can get out of control really fast. It's gonna get out of control really fast. And the other thing is, um, a lot of the death rattle minions suffer from weaker stats. Like loot hoarder, for example. I'll take a two four loot hoarder that draws when it dies. Well, like yes. and Harvest Golem becomes an absolute monster if it gets hit by this buff. And what else does? Even like even uh, Yeti. Like Yeti and Dark Iron become pretty scary. Yeah. Anything really. Um, I know people have been saying light spawn, but let's get real, people. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> silence is still. One thing to know about thing. this is that it, it, you know, it's a. It, if they get silence, it's a three mana three four. If they silence is, this thing, I'm like, I, yeah. I'm happy if they silence this thing. It's like, oh sweet, I, like especially if you're running a death rattle deck instead of the mid rangey one. If you're running the death rattle deck and they silence your dark coldest, you're like, okay, sure, by all means, and it. It has the same thing as Void Caller. They use a spellbreaker for it, it just trades with the spellbreaker. No. <laughs> one for one with the four drop. So and it's the same with uh, keeper. Like It'll be interesting to one. see if people do start trying to incorporate more silence after the next. Um, I think they're gonna have to, to be honest. Like But you know, I've never really been a particularly big fan of sticking spellbreaker in random so. Yeah, but it's it's the kind of thing um, where in I like a druid. It, a keeper is amazing, and you can also use an ancient watchers. But it's it's a different kind of situation where, un, it's not like uh, it's. I mean, in base set Hearthstone, you run silences for mostly utility, and there aren't that like a lot of it's dominated by charge, battle cries. There's a couple death rattles and c persistent effects, but what happens if you triple the number of death rattles in the game? Right, um, and yeah, it's worth noting that there are actually very few. Um, there's only about six or seven death rattle minions in the game. Very like, few death rattles. There's uh, especially neutral ones. There's Lepronome, Harvest Golem, uh, Karen Sylvanas. Loot Hoarder. Loot Hoarder. I uh, think that's it. Blood Mage, Savannah oh, High Main. Blood Mage, yeah. Savannah High Main. That's like it, I think. Like I, Unless I've missed something, I think there's only seven death rattle minions in the entire game, which is. Right. And um, this is a death rattle set. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are. What, five death rattle minions and that's already. There's gonna be probably close to twenty death rattle minions. Um so that's a lot of silences. <laughs> like it's I think Iron Beacal's popularity is definitely gonna go up. Um, what decks do you play Iron Beacal in that you didn't worry? Well no, simply because if you play Iron Beacal, then it's a it's a two drop that shuts down any death rattle aggro openings, and they also if they're a, if they have if they're a class that uses hero powers as pings, then that means they're not putting a threat on the board. Sure. 
Like, um, I'm not saying guaranteed, but I think it probably will. Yeah, it, well, it will also depend on... Because there are some classes against which a 2-1 is great, and some classes against which a 2-1 is not good. Yeah, um, like Druid. It's worth bearing in mind. If Rogue is still popular, then IMD Cal is obviously going to be terrible. That's um, true. And uh, Druid it's also pretty bad against, but then it's really, really good against things like Paladin, which I think Paladin's going to go up in popularity, I think. Because uh, they, they have Redemption, they have... Uh, like all the divine shield synergies, they they can pull off some crazy stuff if they're given some new aggro tools. Paladin needs eagle horn though. <laughs> That'd be so disgusting. I mean, like as a kind of general point, um, like Paladin has all these cheap secrets, but they have no way to get any like additional value out of them. That's true. They like secret yeah. keeper, but that's it. And secret keeper is actually getting worse. With uh, Nax coming out, right? It's supposed to be getting better because you get oh new new secrets, new avenge. Then we have like duplicate, and then maybe a hunter secret. But then Undertaker is a one mana one two that is just infinitely better. Sure. So it's like how like Secret Keeper's always been one of those cards which it tries to contend, but in any deck it like any deck that actually brings out its full potential just. Like still doesn't quite get there, right? And kind of the problem with playing a secret that you know is going to be triggered immediately is that you do lose a bit of tempo. Like, yeah, you do. You play the counter spell for three mana, with the exception bit. of Kirantor, but yeah, sure. Um, I mean, Kirantor is a good card. It's just like you don't really have that many secrets you want to be dropping on turn three. <laughs> like, what are you dropping? Counter spell, and that's it. But then coin. One thing that's um, worth noting is that uh, Dark Cultist is going to be very good in Arena. It's a common as least. well. It's common, yeah. That's miserable. And it's just going to make you cry. Even the effect oh. is insane in Arena. Like yeah. Uh. You, you can you can lose a game to this very easily. And you you know you're going to play against the guy with three. And, yeah, and as Priest is. Um, this is also one of the worst arena classes. Um, we'll see if this gives it a bit of a boost. It's definitely one of the best arena cards that's been released so far. Yeah. Would you pick it over Fireball? <laughs> I mean, I know it's different classes, but that's actually... Jeez. Really? Like best arena cards go. I don't know, what do you think the best card is in Arena? At the moment, I wouldn't... I don't think Fireball is. I think it's a Water Elemental or Flame Strike. Yeah. Fireball's really good, but uh, Water Elemental is... Water really, Elemental is disgusting. Yeah. It's absolutely disgusting. Mm -hmm. And uh, Flame Strike is almost mandatory if you want to get more than seven wins as a mage. Flame Strike makes such a big difference because of the way that um, decks are built in Arena, and there are lots of... Temporary decks that are play a bunch of like some more two stuff. and three drops and then swarm you with some more and kind of tempo you out and then flame strike just completely shuts, shuts that down. down. Yeah, it shuts down the entire game plan. Um, like there are times when you're against a mage and you just have like five three threes and in like in your hand and you can't really do anything because you know that you're gonna get punished. It's gonna be so hard to flame strike a priest if they have dark cultist on the board. I just want to find that out because. Usually, when you flame strike, one thing lives. Yeah, I mean, you can ping it. Yeah. I guess you can ping it first. But... You have to ping it first, but then that's only on turn nine. Yeah. Like, and if it's like a spiteful smith, then. Ugh. Yeah. Spiteful smith. Small. It basically negates the flame strike. <laughs> it actually does on one minute. It's worth noting that uh, in Arena, um, Priest have actually quite a good matchup against Mage. Yeah, it's true actually, because it means you, the ping doesn't do much, uh, and generally they can heal up through a lot of burn and uh, heal through most of the trades, like Water Elemental. Right, yeah, you shadow can Shadow Word Pain. Exactly, Shadow oh, Word. Oh, that's so grim. Uh, shadow Word Pain's really good against Water Elemental. It's really good against a lot of three attack guys. Yeah. Um, Apart from Void Caller. Don't Shadow Word Pain a Void the main, Caller. <laughs> the main problem with Priest in the Arena is that. Um, if you start too slowly, you can get run over um, by a 
deck, a deck like Paladin, which has a lot of ways to capitalize on having board, board control, like the blessing of um, kings and wisdom. And One thing, like, uh, while we're on the, the Paladin thing, I do think that uh, when Nax comes out, the metagame is going to speed up a lot. Because Paladin, yeah. Paladin, I think, is going to both benefit and suffer. Like, um, I think one of the things, like, in favor. Suppose, yeah, suppose that Undertaker Zoo becomes the new best deck. It could. Um, which, I'm not convinced. Um, Depends on the rest of the set. Uh, but but yeah. if that does happen, then obviously Pound and Agro is going to be terrible because Zoo is... Destroys it. Heavily favored against Pound and Agro. Because it's the Divine Favor gets no value. Whereas, you're drawing cards all the time. Yeah, the Zoo's card draw engine still works. Yeah, exactly. So Divine Favor doesn't do much. But then if... Like... And also, like, Knife Juggling. You could call some... card powders deal with. That's true. You could have some mid rangey uh mid rangey decks that Divine Favor just hunts on. Sure, sure. I mean I'm certainly Warlock. Handlock uh, might uh, still yeah. stick around, I think. Or kind of the you know, Void Caller or actually that's the thing I um meant to mention. Uh, is, is do you think there's a place for kind of instead of having a dedicated void caller type deck, do you think you could um fit it into um Maybe handlock. I, well, not handlock as it is, but I think I know what you mean. Mm. I mean, if I you, wouldn't. If you play like a couple of extra demons. And... One thing I wouldn't do is make an entire deck based on void crawler. Doesn't work. Um, well, I, I think the kind of what. Well, because you, you need you void crawler you, every game you, for it to work. Obviously, you don't have a deck that's based entirely around void crawler, but in the sense that. You have a couple demons. Yeah. Maybe a sense demons just to make sure you always have a target. No, in, 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 in the sense, that the plan is to play all these big demons, and we're playing them because void colors in the deck. Mm. Like, I mean, I think Handlock's going to stick around as it is, but with Nerubian Egg in the deck. But yeah, that's something that I um, like to see because Nerubian Egg has a lot of possibilities in Handlock. You can, um, you know, power overwhelming it. You can kill it with your own Hellfire. You can. Um, Obviously, you've got the taunts and stuff. You can powerful woman shadow flame. Um, you can give it taunts. Yeah, of... it's it's kind of competing with a slot for ancient watch and that has a lot of those same synergies there. It is a bit. But, um, uh... And obviously, ancient watcher is much more of a defensive card to give taunt to because it has more health. That's true. Um, the mm -hmm. reason I don't see void caller in handlock, and I see it more in sort of a mid rangey more. Uh, I see it in like a bridge between zoo and. Uh, like handlock, and the main reason is because it costs four mana. Like, you really don't want another four drop contending with Twilight Drake and Mountain. Like, wh if you have a Twilight Drake or a Mountain, are you really going to play a Void Caller? Like on turn four. That's true, and um, you know, I mentioned that it doesn't have the same impact on turn four as mm. other cards. Um, you want to be compensating, like you want to be compensating for your first two turns of life tapping. Yeah, Void Caller does something unfair if you have time to do it. So. Right. If you have a more, not hyper aggressive, but a more like, that's that's kind of why I was thinking about the death rattle stuff because you can play like a one drop, then you can play like, uh, maybe a two drop and then a one drop life tap or something like that, and then go void caller. Then you're set up to do something good, but the problem with having it in a slower deck is that you just like you're gonna get run over <laughs> if you uh, play the void caller. So I mean. I don't know. It's one of those things which we'll have to s like. Void Caller is good, dependent on the metagame, because it's very reliant on how fast the metagame is. Uh, where faster metagames definitely impact uh, the decks it's in, at least. Sure. So I'm I'm not sure. The Priest card I think is definitely going to be played a lot. Uh, I don't know where exactly because I'm not a Priest player, but uh, it's definitely going to be played a, a decent amount. Void Caller. Um, People are going to try it just because it's a combo we card, and if it's really, really good, then it's going to be a staple, and if it's a bit too slow or too tempo, like, if it causes issues with tempo, then it may not stick around. It's kind of like the Divine Spirit inner fire combo, but on a minion instead of the two-card combo with spells. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, there's a big difference between... Um, yeah. 
for many healing spells. Um, Say, similar principle master, though, the combo is bit. Master is amazing and enraged, it's kind of bad. Yeah, the minion part makes it much, much better. That is true. Um, it's amazing how much benefit you get from having a minion attached to stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, same same thing is true with Aldor Keep Peacekeeper, the best one of the and, best at the drops in the game. And humility. And humility. <laughs> one of the worst one drops in the game. Right. Um, Contending mostly with Paladin secrets. And a card from being really good to unplayable. Is it just me or does Paladin have all the bad one drops? Um, they have eye for an eye. They have I'm repentance. Really. They have redemption now because you can't trigger it on your own turn. They've got humility. Eye they for have an eye. You meta. Eye for an eye. You meta. Then they have uh, lights justice. They have like all their one drops. Oh, like noble sack is an amazing, amazing card. But like so many miserable one drops in paladin. There's some nice. They have some nice other cards. Like their four drops are really good, but. Miserable one drops, mostly because of the secrets. Um, I noticed the other day, um, Paladin hmm. only has four class minions. Really? Yeah. Wait, Aldor, Protector, Tyrion. You're actually not Aldor wrong. Things. They only have four. The least of any class. They do have a lot of four drops, but they only <laughs> have. Uh, <laughs> they've. <a> <sighs> That's. Kind of miserable considering how minion focused that class is. Right. Um. That's actually a valid point. Nah, whatever. Anyway, anything else as far as uh, Dark Cultist or Void Cooler goes before we end the show for this week? I think I've um, said everything I wanted to say. Fair enough. Anyway. Thank TLDR. you for watching. <laughs> TLDR. Dark Cultist is really good. Void color is a card with interesting, interesting. possibilities. Yes. All right. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback or any questions for me or Dapper, put it in the comment section below. As for now, this has been Jotto and Dapper signing off. <laughs>